welcome once again to our reflections on the gospel reading and the the readings this weekend are quite remarkable as someone once said when you are down to nothing God is up to something and uh, I find these words to be so true the readings this weekend are for those who are looking for some state of peace or some state of perfection and they just can't seem to find it it's for those who have prayed and prayed over some issue and they don't seem to be able to get an answer God seems to be an old man with hard hearing and bad eyesight and I'm talking about any situation that you might have prayed about it could be a situation in your home your family your marriage a friend an acquaintance your place of work you have prayed and you have prayed over it and absolutely nothing has happened well this is how st. Paul felt in our second reading this weekend where he says here in 2nd Corinthians chapter 7 to keep me from being too elated a thorn was placed in my flesh a messenger of Satan to torment me to keep me from being too elated three times I appealed to the Lord about this that it would leave me but he said to me my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness power is made perfect in weakness what is this about a thorn in the flesh that caused him weakness or discomfort did the great Saint Paul have some sort of addiction did he have a drinking problem or did he gamble excessively something that he prayed about over and over we are told three times and God did absolutely nothing about it God left the issue unresolved and what kind of answer does God give him my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness it doesn't seem to be an answer at all and it seems to be in mark contrast to Matthew 7 7 where we are told ask and you shall receive seek and you will find knock and it shall be opened well in this case that does not happen at all um, there is no um, there is no uh, seeking there is no doors being opened and there are no answers being provided to the questions that we ask it seems as though some issues in our spiritual lives just seem to remain unresolved there is a not yet element to our Christian existence so let me ask you what have you done about some of these unresolved issues in your life well I will tell you this sometimes when you have a child and they ask you for something and you refuse to give it to them they pout and they sulk they start to scream they throw a tantrum um, and sometimes I feel that there is a bit of a child in us as well we pout and we sulk when God doesn't give us something um, according to our own time frame the fact of the matter is if we don't get what we receive we, um, we, we revert to this kind of instant gratification uh, situation that we find in our society today um, we have a problem and we want it solved right now when we can't get an answer fast enough we push God aside this is precisely what Adam and Eve did they pushed God aside because they felt that God was not working in their best interests they went ahead and did things their own way which brought a lot of pain and confusion in their lives well in our gospel reading today we are told that Jesus himself faced failure and frustration it wasn't always about walking on water and raising the dead and healing the cripples mark records sorry Matthew records in chapter 6 verse 6 that among his own people he was not able to perform any deeds apart from curing a few sick people by laying his hands on them let me quote directly from chapter 6 verse 4 and Jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor except in his own hometown and among his kin and in his own house and Jesus could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick and cured them 
he was amazed at their lack of faith. Sometimes when we are frustrated and when our prayers are not answered and God seems to be distant, God may just be telling us to wait. Waiting is a tool that God uses to bring us into a closer relationship of trust with Him. And it's up to us to recognize that God is in our waiting and that it's okay to wait. We have to calm that screaming child in us and resist the tendency to push God aside. That miserable, uncomfortable, sometimes painful state of silence is one of God's most powerful tools to set us free. But more often than not, we wait, but with a kind of bitterness and resentment in our hearts. And we begin to make a God of what we desire. We pray for a particular kind of job, or we pray for money. And if God is taking too long, we become obsessed. We must have this one particular job, or X amount of dollars. Nothing else seems to matter. We might even become resentful towards God, who wouldn't give us what we want. A writer, John Piper, said that waiting on God is the opposite of running ahead of the Lord, and it's the opposite of bailing out on the Lord. It's staying at your appointed place when he says to stay, or it's going at his appointed pace when he says to go. So we have the choice then to take a deep breath, release our clenched hands and let God be God. And we are invited to continue hoping in his greatness. Paul writing in the second reading puts it very beautifully where he says, my grace is sufficient for you for power is made perfect in weakness. I would rather boast most gladly of my weakness in order that the power of Christ may dwell with me. Therefore, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So my dear friends, whatever your circumstances might be, wait on the Lord that his power might be made manifest in your weakness and pain. God bless you and have a great day.